radical, dude. Yeah, that's one of the one of the one of the lines that I remember from watching this TV show. If you can tell me what the TV show, who the TV character is, and also tell me, radical, dude. Next time you see me, um, well, let's just say I dare you to. So this is section ten two, ten dash two, and we're ta- we're 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 gonna learn about simplifying radicals or expressions that have a square root symbol. All right, so our goal is revolved around that, which is to simplify radicals involving products and quotients, and it's gonna really be a combination of um, testing what you know about um, prime factorization, so factoring things with prime numbers, and also um, looking for greatest common factors that happen to be perfect squares. So we'll get to that in a second. So radical expression is an expression that can, contains a radical. Remember, a radical is the square root symbol. All right, and we are going to talk a briefly about this um, to rationalize the denominator. That and to re- we'll review it in a little bit. But to rationalize the denominator of an expression, rewrite it so that there are no radicals in the denominator. Okay, and no denominators in any radical. So we can't have a denominator with a radical symbol. Um, that's one of those rules like you can't divide by zero. We're going to say you, you can't have negative exponents, stuff like that. We can't have a radical on the bottom. So we're going to have to rationalize that by doing something. But let's start by just reviewing basics of um, exponents. Or sorry, radicals, square roots. So square root of 49, hopefully you know, is 7 or negative 7. We're going to just deal with positives, though, for today. Um, so we're going to say that's 7. Um, this one would be, a square root of 89 is 9, but that negative is outside, so it is a negative 9. A square root of 25 is 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. A square root of 100 is 10. So those are basic radicals. Remember, this, those are perfect squares. We want to look for perfect squares today. Some other common perfect squares would be the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16, oops, 16, square root of 36, square root of 64. That covers most of the, the common ones under 100. But what we're going to do here is, is, is this. We're going to look at radical expressions and we're going to simplify them. A radical expression is simplified if the following statements are true. The radicand has no, that would be the thing underneath the radical, has no perfect square factors other than 1. There are no fractions, and no radicals appear in the denominator of, the, of a fraction. So, here are some examples of simplified radicals. So, we can have this as a fraction because there is no, radi- there's no radical in the fraction. Um, 3 times square root of 5. We, we say that as, it's, you say 3 square roots of 5. I'm going to put that up here, um, just so you know how to say it. When I say three square roots of, whoops, sorry about that. Three square roots of five is how it's pronounced very often. You can say it's three times the square root of five. This would be nine square roots of x, square root of two to over four. Now some non-simplified ones here. I can get this to come down here. Some non-simplified ones, 3 times the square root of 12, or 3 square roots of 12. That's not simplified, because we can actually simplify the square root of 12 part farther. Um, having a fraction inside of a radical, or having a radical on the bottom of a fraction. Those are not okay. So we're going to re- do ways to simplify those. So, let's look at the multiplication property of square roots. The multiplication property of square roots basically says, if you have, let's look right here, if you have the square root of something times something, you can break it apart um, and kind of distribute that square root to the two parts inside. So like the square root of 48 here could be 16 times 3 is, is we get you to 18, or 48, so you have the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. And the reason that you want to do that is because the square root of 16 is a perfect square that you can simplify to 4. So then you get it to 4 square roots of 3. And that's what we're going to do right now. Removing perfect square factors is our goal. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it. Um, here is one way. When you have the square root of 72, now if you think about it, um, 
if we have the square root of 72, we can break that apart by just all prime factors. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 would get you 72, which would be um, the square root of 2 squared th times the square root of 3 squared, and then you have one more square root of 2. The square root of 2 squared is 2, the square root of 3 squared is 3, and then if you multiply those together, you just get 6, and then times the square root of 2, or 6 square roots of 2. Now what I like to do is do this type of factor tree. So the square root of 72. And I want to find things that are perfect squares. So I'm going to say this is the um, square root of 36. 36 goes into the square root of 72. 36 times 2 would be the 72, so that would be times the square root of 2. Okay, and this is all multiplying. Square root of 36 is 6. And then square root of 2 doesn't go any farther, so this would equal square root of six, or 6 times the square root of 2, or 6 square roots of 2. Okay, you might have to make a bigger factor tree than that for other ones, but that's the basic gist of it. So you choose which way you think works better. I like the factor tree better. And try it with square root of 80. Um, pause it for a second. I'll go through it with you as well. So the square root of 80, I'm going to take that and I'm going to break it apart. And then, um, let's see. We'll pull the square root. Let's look for a perfect square that goes into 80. I think 16 goes into 80. Yeah, square root of 16. And that would be 32, 64. It goes in 5 times, so times the square root of 5. And the square root of 16, of course, is 4. And we're left with 4 and the square root of 5. So our answer is 4 square roots of 5. Okay? Some of it, especially with bigger numbers, you might have to break it down more. So there's different ways of going about it. But let's say you have same idea only with, uh, sorry, variables on the inside. We're going to have to do the same thing with multiple parts. So this one, it might be easier to break it down using the method of pulling it all apart with the prime factors. 3 times 3 times 5 times A times A times A times A times B times, B times and so on. Because we can group those, and so like we have two threes here, so that's going to be the square root of nine, which is three. We have two a's, two a's, so that's going to be the square root of a squared, which is a, and the square root of a squared, which is a. So we have two a's or a squared outside of it. We can have the b's, we'll have one b left in there, and then c's. So when you simplify that, if you write them as exponents of a power of two, it looks like this, and then that simplifies down to a squared, because we'll have two a's pulled out, b squared, c to the third power, so there's going to be one, two, three, and then we're left with this and this still on the inside, so times the square root of 5b. So that's fully simplified. Now you can also take it a factor tree, and I'm going to have to look, I'm gonna, we're going to look at uh, the second one here. The negative m is already out in front. So if you have the square root of, let's let's do two of them. Square root of, uh, right, because you can break it apart. Square root of 80 times the square root of m to the eighth power times the square root of m. I did that right away. I broke apart the m to the eighth and m because that's not, that makes m to the ninth. Um, because I know m to the eighth, the square root of m to the eighth is going to be just m to the fourth m to the 4th times m to the 4th would be m to the 8th. So we're left with this. That can't go any farther. This can't go any farther. And now I can break down the 80. And we did that already. It's, it's square root of 16 and the square root of 5. And that becomes, that's a prime. That's going to be the square root. That's going to be 4. So the ones that are on the outside and stay on the outside would be this one and this one. So I have 4. Sorry about that. I have 4m to the 4th power. And then the inside we have 5 and m, so times the square root of 5m. And that would be a simplified version of the square root of 8. Or, oh, I also forgot about the negative m on the outside. So we put this as a negative, and we have another m on the outside, so it's m to the 5th. That's a simplified version of it. That's the basics of simplifying radicals. Now what we're going to do here is 
take a look at when we're multiplying two expressions. It's really kind of what we're doing. We were doing already because we were already breaking it apart, breaking things apart. But sometimes when you have so an expression like this where we're multiplying, you can't really break down it with the 14 and the 7. You can break down the t squared because the square root of t squared is just t. But it's going to be beneficial then for things like this to multiply it together right away. So like this, we have um, 2 square roots of 7t times 3 square roots of 14t squared. To do that, let's take the ones on the outside, and we make 2 times 3 is 6. The ones on the inside, we're going to all go together in one um, inside part to get the square root of 98t cubed. And now we are just back to what we did uh, like in our past example. We want to break down the parts on the inside yet even farther. So if you do a factor tree, you can do that, or you can break it down. Um, 49 goes into 98. 49, square root of 49 is 7. And also t squared, you can pull out, and that's going to be the square root of t squared is t. So this part is going to be coming out as 7 and t, which would make 6 times 7t, which is 49, sorry, 42t. The 2t stays in there because it can't be simplified any further. And this would be your simplified answer um, when you have it fully simplified. So again, if you'd like to try that, I have an example here for you, or you can just um, follow along and go through another example because we have three of them actually. I want to make sure you you understand this when you're multiplying. Okay. So I'm going to take a take the inside parts, and I'm going to multiply them together. So we have three times the square root of six times eighteen, and six times eighteen. Um, is 108. Now, I want to break down the 108, the 108 part um, so I can see if there's any whole number factors in there, or uh, perfect square factors. Let's do 108 divided by 2 would be 54. That's not a perfect square. Let's do divided by 3. Aha! So I get 36. So that means I have the square root of 36. And the square root of 3. Square root of 36 I know is, and this one's already out in front, I know is 6, and this is going to be the only one on the inside. So then our result is going to be whatever 3 times 6 times the square root of 3 is, and that would equal 18 square roots of 3. I'm going to minimize this so that we have it, uh, we can we have room for another one. Second one. Everything's on the inside, so we're going to write it as square root of 2 times 9 is 18. A squared and A cubed would be A to the fourth power. So I know this that we're going to first break this apart into the square root of 18 and the square root of 8 to the 4th power. The square root of 8 to the 4th power is a squared. So we're good there. The square root of 18, we're going to break down into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. The square root of 9, of course, is... Oops, there's nothing left. That's just 3. So we have 3, the square root of 2, and a squared. So our result is going to be 3 times a squared times the square root of 2, which is just 3 a squared square roots of 2. Okay. Again, this is kind of a weird little, um, it's a weird thing simplifying radicals. But the more practice you do, the more you get the hang of it and the more it makes sense. All right. All right, one more. So we've already got two parts on the outside. So we're going to leave those on the outside. We're going to leave those as um, 21. 3 times 7 is 21. And then the inside, we're going to have 5 times 20, which is 100. x times x to the 5th, which is x to the 6th. So you can break these two apart. So we already have 21. And square root of 100 and the square root of x squared, uh, x to the 6th power. And both of those are going to be simplified. Square root of 100 is 10. Sweet. 
sorry. And the square root of x to the 6th power is x to the 3rd power. Because x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd becomes x to the 6th. So the there's nothing on the inside of a radical anymore. So our answer is just going to be 21 times 10 times x cubed, which equals 210x cubed. And there it is. So those are great examples of multiplying, um, simplifying radicals and simplifying radicals that involve multiplication first. So the last thing we want to do is just do a couple examples of when there is division. Okay, There is one thing that we need to note about this that's important. Um, two things actually. One is the division property of square roots. It's very similar to the multiplication property. If we have the square root of a, a quotient, like a over b, that's equal to the square root of a over the square root of b. So an example would be if you have the square root of 36 over 49, that is the same thing as the square root of 36 over the square root of 49, which equals 6 sevenths. Now, when you're simplifying things with thin radicals, we want to use that property. Okay. So an example, square root of 64 over square root of 49, we have broken down there, and that just becomes 8 over 7. Simplify each of those. Now, if you have the square root of... 8x cubed over the square root of 50x. Um, we can also break that down. But if we can simplify anything on the inside first, we want to simplify anything on the inside. Because the x's, we have one, okay, that's out there, and this will become 2. We can also reduce the fraction on the inside a little bit, divide both sides by, both top and the bottom by 2, and we get 4 over 25. So you're left with 4x squared over 25. Okay, now if you break that apart, separate that using the division property of x uh, square roots, we have the square root of 4x squared over the square root of 25, and that is going to simplify nicely um, by doing the square root of 4 times the square root of x squared over the square root of 25. And those all simplify so that there are no radicals. So we have 2x over 5 is our final result. Okay. Why don't you try that before we get to one last thing? So I'm gonna have I'm gonna pause it and you can try these and I'll show. You. All right, first one simplify nicely. It just becomes uh, square root of 144 over the square root of nine, which is 12 over three. Or if you divide it out, it's four. Second one, you could simplify the inside first. So I reduce the a over a cubed to just being nothing on the top over a squared. I think I just changed it to an x. Sorry about that. And then the 39, 36 over 4, you could reduce before or after. I reduced it before and I just got 9, um, so that stays on top. And then when I simplify it, you end up getting 3 over x. And the one on the, the farthest right is the most challenging one, um, but still works to simplify the top and the bottom, or try to put the square root on the top and the bottom using the division uh, property of square roots. And then breaking apart the top, you get 5y, and then there's 1y left under this the radical. So 5y, square roots of y, over z. So what happens if you do have a radical left under the, or on the denominator? That's where this comes in. Rationalizing the denominator is a method used to eliminate radicals from the denominator of a fraction. So if possible, reduce the fraction first. Again, we want to always do that. Use the division property of square roots. And then to remove a radical from the denominator, if you have one yet, multiply the original by that radical over itself. So here's an example. If you have the square root of 120 over 80, you can simplify that and you have the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, But then when you break that apart, it is the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. You can't have a radical on the bottom. But what you can do is multiply this thing. Really, the only legal thing you can do is multiply it by 1 because it doesn't change it. And if you know anything about 1, if you have a fraction where it's the same denominator and numerator, that's the same as 1. Like 3 over 3 is 1. So we're going to multiply it by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 because that would reduce to 1 and it wouldn't actually change it at all but it's going to help us get rid of the denominator uh, of a, a radical on the denominator. 
So when you multiply that now, if you multiply across, this would be the square root of 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Over the square root of 4, which just equals the square root of 6 over 2. And we have no radical in the bottom anymore. That's what it means to rationalize the, um, the denominator, making it so it's a rational number and not an irrational number with a radical. So I know that was only one example, so if you want to try it on your own, go ahead and pause it. Otherwise, I have a couple examples here that I'm going to go through right now, and I know the video is getting kind of long, but this is the last um, examples for you. Okay? Similar to the last one, we're going to do get rid of the denominator, so we have to multiply it by the square root of 3, because the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to make it the square root of 9. So if we do that on the top and the bottom, Oops, sorry, 3 is under there. You end up getting the square root of 6 over the square root of 9, and that equals the square root of 6 over 3. Now that is reduced, and there is no radical in the denominator. All right, this is all supposed to be underneath the, the denominator here. So we're going to multiply the square root of 18m on both the top and the bottom. Okay, now when we do that, we're going to have the square root of um, whatever 5 times 18, I think it becomes 90, and then you still have an M, okay, and on the bottom we have the square root of, well it's going to reduce to be being just 18 M, if you notice the pattern, it'll be like 3 something, but it, when you when you read, when you simplify it, it'll just be 18 and m. Now this is great because we have no radical in the, but the denominator, but we can still simplify the top. This can be reduced a little bit. So if we break that apart, we have the square root of let's do the square root of 9 times the square root of 10 m. 10 m is going to stay in there. The square root of 9 is 3. Let's extend this a little bit. So we have the 3 square roots of 10m over 18 times m. And it's still not done because 3 over 18 can be reduced here to 1 over 9. So we end up getting 1 square root of 10m over 9m. A lot of different ways you can simplify this, and that would be fully simplified now, though. Okay, let's go back to number 3 then, which is actually going to be a little bit simpler. So we end up getting the square root of 7x over the square root of 3 when you break it apart. And to simplify that, to get rid of the denominator, we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 on top and bottom. And you end up with square root of 21x, and I don't think 21 can be simplified at all, over the square root of 9, and that would be square root of 21x over 3. Now you may ask why can't you reduce 21 over 3? And the reason is because 21 is under a radical and a 3 is not. They either have to both be under a radical or neither be under a radical. Okay? And that is how you reduce it when there is division. So as a closing question, um, see if you can remember how to just simplify a basic 124 using the prime factorization. But well, that takes us back to our learning target of simplifying radicals that involve products and quotient. It is radical, dude. Have a great rest of your day.